Hello. Well, today I'm uh, continuing with the uh, Tarantino <laughs> movies. And uh, uh, the film I have in eighth place is um, Jackie Brown, uh, my preferred uh, films that he has done. Um, this is not a bad film, just like Death Proof was not bad. Um, for, for me, though, um, there, there's just something different about this film. Um, not bad, but different enough to where when I rank uh, his movies, I don't always rank it um, um, as highly as some of the others. And um, I believe part of that is due to it this being the only adaptation he has ever done um, you know the, the film is very good um, but there's just something different uh, because he hasn't ever really adapted um, a movie from source material you know now he's obviously said that he's been inspired by various films um, and so as a result certain stuff he has seen over the years sort of comes together to make this like a brand new movie essentially and um, there's always like a mixture of stuff in there um, but this is like the first real uh, adaptation of a book that he's ever done and it's very interesting it's very different um, I will say the cast is definitely excellent you know Pam Greer is that great uh, Samuel L. Jackson is always Robert Forrester, Robert De Niro, Michael Keaton, um, Bridget Fonda, and um, and everybody in the film. Uh, everybody does a great job. The writing is well done. Um, I think another reason I do kind of rank this a bit lower is because, you know, I don't know, every time I've watched this, and this has happened ever since the very first time, and I never had a clue <laughs> that I would ever have this in my head at that point I was just excited to see more Tarantino stuff when I was really getting more into his movies I got this feeling that he the I don't know it's like he made this and he just sort of I don't know about the style it's just like the style is just very different I mean it's both the same yet different all at once and I think part of that is probably because he adapted it and I think um, because of that he really did what he could to try and outdo himself with Pulp Fiction, which came out before this, obviously. Um, and, um, I don't know. You know, it does fit the, his, his work, you know, um, crime film. Uh, Jackie Brown getting uh, caught with uh, quite a bit of money that she's, uh, as she's an uh, airline Airline stewardess, um, and how you know things aren't always really looking up for her, and so she's uh, her friend Ordell, played by Samuel Jackson. Um, she's you know uh, going back and forth from Mexico to America to uh, bring him some money, and so from there. She gets caught by a couple of uh, feds, uh, one of which played by Michael Keaton, and from there we um, really get uh, things going. They obviously things for a bit. You know, there's plans uh, going, and you know, bail bondsman played by uh, Robert Forrester, and how everything sort of ties in at a certain point. How things are going to. Like, seem to go according to plan but not and how as the movie goes on Max Cherry um, played by Robert Forrester but Bill Bondsman he, he and Jackie and of course Pam Greer you know they uh, sort of play into take this uh, the, the money really for themselves and um, of sorts and um, also do it in such a way where she's able to get off with the feds you know as part of this deal because 
originally she wasn't going to say anything, but, you know, going to make a plan to go to play along, but also not all at once. And it's like, just give us stuff. Because, you know, what they're interested in is Ordell, and, you know, he says he sells guns. And so it's like they want him. And to... really, that's just how things are, sort of got going and just going. It's it's very interesting in how um, just the way that things um, uh, happen and how what seems to be a, a plan and seems to be not too uh, complex. To, at first, for many of the people involved, all of a sudden things go awry and by the end and it's just very very it, it's very interesting to watch how all this unfolds um you know um, a lot of people have already talked so much about this film and a lot of people really rank this very high um and i can see why i think part of it is the appeal is it is in various ways it's both obviously similar to the film a couple of films prior but also some of the later stuff but it's also different and I think po probably part of it is the difference that this film has compared to like Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction you know those were like say those are like gangster type films this yes and no it's also like a obviously it's a crime film but also you know cat and mouse with the police and trying to get Odell and how all this will happen and it's just it's it's very interesting it's very good um now i hadn't watched this for quite some time and um so with each viewing i do think my uh the enjoyment i've had has increased which is good um it's um you know, and this series isn't really to talk about the overall plot, because obviously I think people know that, but just how everything kind of uh, starts and how things are talked about with the plan to get the money from Mexico for or Ordell, Jackie, and how, like, Lewis, Robert De Niro will fit in this, and Melanie, uh, Bridget Fonda, and just how all these characters intertwine, and um, that is always fascinating to me, just just seeing the interactions and seeing how things are placed and it's truly it it's always in fa uh, fantastic um i think I, I i really enjoy the characters the characters are really good um quentin tarantino is in this film but as the voice of the um answering machine for jackie brown which is uh which is quite interesting because you know the first time watching it i i thought i heard his voice but i wasn't completely sure later on this of course it was years ago but then i watched it sometime later and i'm like okay that's that is who i thought it was um it's very interesting you know it, obviously quentin tarantino usually puts his face in there and in, in his own films but this film he doesn't um i think also Because this is an adaptation of a book, um, you know, Quentin Tarantino has his own, like, universe. Um, some of the films he has made, like Death Proof, for instance, and also Kill Bill, those are movies that he says, like, characters, like, from, like, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. If they went to see a movie, like, they'd see Kill Bill or they'd see Death Proof, you know, something like that. Um, and um, this film doesn't really fit with that. It's, you know, you know red apple cigarettes aren't smoked. Um, no connections, really, with, like, Big Kahuna Burger or $5 Shakes or um, Jack Rabbit Slims. Um, certain names that are referenced in other uh, Tarantino written films at least uh, if he didn't direct it it's, it's very very um, uh, 
it's really cool how he has made his own sort of like cinematic universe over the years um, and this isn't part of it it's not a film that people would have in those his other movies would ever watch um, maybe people would uh, read the book that could uh, always be a possibility but I guess in that world Jackie Brown does not exist if anything I'm sure like the actual book itself would be sort of adapted and might not be Jackie Brown but This is a very fantastic film, and, you know, of course, obviously, as I go, and this is just my ranking, and so you don't have to agree, <laughs> obviously. But, you know, this is just, I don't know, it's fun. Went through all these films and just sort of reevaluating if I really do think uh, these films are ranked the same way as I have before, and, um... So far, it seems to be the case, but, you know, maybe some point later on, some will have changed, and so... Um, I don't believe I've ever said how I've ranked many of these films, though I have listed one in my uh, top five films, so there is that. But outside of that, um, I really uh, have... I, I've, I've always appreciated the fact that with these movies... Like, even the ones that uh, I don't enjoy as much, um, as time goes on, I find myself, um, when I rewatch them, I just enjoy them. Uh, just the enjoyment is uh, still there, and it increases just a little bit, you know. No matter how small that is, it still increases, and I know it does. Um, it's also the only film... Maybe not completely the only film, but I'll get into that just for a moment. But it's the only one that is filmed in the with the aspect ratio of 1.8 to 1, whereas the others are 2.35 or now 2.40 to 1 uh, aspect ratio. So there's no bars on the top and bottom. Um, Four Rooms, which he made with three other writer directors. Um, year that just came out the year right after um uh, Pope Fiction you know where he it's an anthology film where he uh, directed the last uh story wrote and directed the last story um that was also shot in the same aspect ratio as Jackie Brown and um it's interesting how he uh hasn't he's he never before nor since has he ever use this aspect ratio and it's interesting I mean his films do especially as time has gone on have a very very cinematic feel so I guess you know he wants that sort of epic look with the with the aspect ratio that sort of really makes the film feel and look epic um, um, but not this one interestingly enough um, I do think this is a still a very good film I enjoy it um and uh, I do like the fact that every time I rewatch it, uh, my enjoyment of it uh, increases a little bit each time. And um, while that feeling ha so far of me thinking like he's really tried to outdo himself sort of purposely with this film, um, uh, after Pro Fiction, uh, hasn't gone away. Maybe one day it will, um, and if it does, Perhaps I might rank this film a bit higher. I don't know. Um, but for now, this is where I stand. And who knows, maybe after the next film he makes, the tenth film, I will um, see things differently a bit. You know, um, definitely think about his uh, filmography and how I rank it. Maybe my favorite film of his so far might not be my favorite film. Maybe the last movie he makes will be my favorite. Um, uh, or maybe it won't. I mean, um, who knows? Um, not much has been said about it, obviously, but um, he usually does uh, tend to have a few years or so between movies, so who knows? Um, but so far... Um, 
I do rank this film uh, fairly low uh, in terms of Tarantino's filmography, but that's not, I don't think, a bad thing, because, you know, I don't really believe he has made a bad movie. You know, there are some I enjoy more than others, of course, but then there are those that um, I really love and I will rewatch more often than the others. Um, but this is a film that um, I think as time goes on, I really uh, enjoy it more, and I'm I'm real happy with that. I'm I, I like when I'm able to enjoy something like this more and more as time goes on because. That means uh, I, I will be happy to rewatch it any time uh, in the near future, hopefully. Um, and it's just really excellent. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a great film, great performances. The plot is interesting. Um, I haven't read the book, so I might do that one day. And um, hopefully the book is just as good as the film, because the film is really good. And if this is a film that you rank very high, uh, when you rank the Tarantino films, that's fine. I can uh, definitely understand that. I think it's uh, um, very, very, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has their preference. Um, and um, I will say it's nice to see him sort of step out of the writing like an original screenplay and actually adapt uh, a book. It's really cool, you know. Some just direct and write and direct um, original stuff. Some only um, adapt films. Some do a mixture. Um, some of, of both of those. Some do mostly ad adaptations. Like a large part of Stanley Kubrick's career was uh, adapting. Uh, from books or some sort of source material and um, others mostly write original stuff but occasionally will adapt a book and um, I think this is a excellent adaptation of course again I haven't seen or read the book um, but it's a very good film I enjoy it uh, I know with these I don't I'm not I haven't been very too in depth so far with like death proof or whatever but I'm trying to just sort of like explain why I enjoy these films why I rank them the way I do for Tarantino's stuff but this is really a fantastic film um, I love that I'm able to enjoy this movie more and more as I watch it um, I think it would be unfortunate if I enjoyed it the first time but then the thought I had uh, that still does persist with me, um, and <clears throat> where uh, I might watch it again, and then I'm like, eh, I don't like it as much now, and then that thought sort of grows bigger and bigger, and then sort of a bit overwhelming. That wouldn't be too fun, I don't think. Um, but yeah, um, that's really all I have uh, for now. <clears throat> um, I hope you enjoyed this. I had fun uh, re-watching uh, this film in particular for this time, and I enjoyed uh, talking about it here, um, and I think I'm able to have uh, expressed my uh, reasons why I enjoy and, uh, this film as much as I do, but also explain why uh, I don't rank it as high, um, and I probably could do a better job of that too. Um, uh, that's just... Uh, This is just my thoughts on um, uh, making this not too long after I'm watching this film. So I hope all of you are um, doing well. Hope all of you have had a great day or a great week so far. And hope this weekend will be great for you. And I shall see you all next time. Take care. Bye.